right, uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming to uh, one of the music department's regular Wednesday events. Um, uh, we have a really exciting group today. Um, uh, the air band, most of you have been here watching them sort of set up and sound check all of their stuff. They're going to do a little bit of performing and then they're going to talk afterwards about how they do what they do, how they make what they make, um, and all these sort of things. So please join me in welcoming the air band. Thank you. I'm Langton Crawford. This is William David Fasnow and Timothy Patterson. We are the air band.
112.
Addison. Thomas. One hundred and twenty.
So, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> demonstrated what we're doing like through performance I thought maybe we'd talk about what's going on in these dangerous looking little things we carry around in our hands um, let me just get the uh, slideshow live here all right so where these cats sit play, we perform with computers, right? And um, I always have to ask this question, why? Why are we playing air guitars? Why are we, why are we the air band? Well, performing with computers and accounting with computers to me looks like the same behavior. You're sitting at a desk, you know? Like if we made all these noises just sitting here like this, I got my desk going right here. What would be different about that than, say, like going into the office and like balancing some spreadsheets, right? I mean, sure, we have dramatic lighting. Maybe we have cooler looking things on the desk, but it's still kind of like sitting at a desk. And I think the sounds that come out of computers are really exciting. And it's a shame to have that kind of, um, kind of passive, static kind of performance behavior be the thing that causes all these amazing, exciting sounds to happen. So. You know, we got to kind of think of ways, like, how can we control these sounds? How can we make them happen in a way that's meaningful? Well, I was thinking about this right around the time when um, this uh, documentary came out about these, these guys that don't actually play music, but they, they kind of dance to music. Um, you might have <laughs> seen some of these characters on the YouTube. They, they play like a rock song, and then they flail about wildly as if they were playing the guitar part in the rock song. I mean, they put on spectacular performances, glasses flying off, glitter explosions. Um, this guy was a champion in like 2007. Um, and you know, these guys put on an exciting performance. There's exciting sound happening. Why not do this, waving around the hands in the air to cause the music to happen? Well, there is some technology that does that, but it, it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. Um, we have the theremin. If you haven't heard of it, it's a capacitance sensor that lets you play like kind of tones by waving your hands near these antennas. Um, more contemporary inventions such as the uh, Kinect allow you to move your body in space and control a video game in the case of the Kinect. Um, but that, at the time we were developing these, the Kinect wasn't really uh, something you'd want to take out on the stage. Right. It's okay in a studio environment, so you can perfectly control everything. But you show up at a club, and you gotta throw some wires down in like 10 minutes and do a show. This wasn't an ideal situation. So I had to think, well, what else is out there that, that works like this? I, I know that there's lots of MIDI gear out there that works beautifully. You know, we have our keyboards and our percussion interfaces, DJ interfaces, things like that. Um, even uh, video game controllers can be wired to send MIDI, and this would be fine. But um, there's some problems with this. One, the, the uh, keyboards here are kind of like the, uh, I'm still in the same problem. I'm down here behind some sort of desk. Unless I like tip the keyboard to like tie it to my legs so I can play it where you can see what I was doing. You know? Um, the Wii remote is close because it allows me to wave my hands and press some buttons, right? But it, it didn't have um, something that I need, like more continuous control, like uh, turning on the knob versus pressing the key. So that wasn't quite there. Um, some other cats in, in Europe came up with some wild stuff. Like Letitia Sami came up with this ladies' glove. Like she hacked apart an old Nintendo glove and took out the sensors and put all sorts of wires and stuff in it so she could control all sorts of things with this glove on her hand. Um, liked the idea, but that made it difficult to actually run the computer during, the, like, sometimes I need to change things during a show. Sometimes I just need to practice and change the software. Um, so having a glove on with like, really sensitive electronics all over it was a problem. So 
gloves ended up not working out. Um, Michel Weissig over in um, Stein uh, invented these things called the hands, which he just basically took some keyboards apart and mounted them to his hands so he could control all sorts of stuff by typing in the air effectively. Um, I really liked that kind of idea, something that I can hold in my hands, I can put it down, right? pick it up, put it down, and use the computer when I need to prepare, and then immediately test it out, you know, make, make a ruckus um, without kind of being all careful about setup. Um, some things about his, his uh, instrument that I liked were he had lots and lots and lots of buttons, but I didn't like that they were buttons. Um, so I had to come up with something that, that allowed me to have basically a bunch of faders at my fingertips, and I could wave my hands in there, right? So that's where I had to come up with the uh, MIDI air guitar. Now this is the first model. I dedicate this one to the uh, TSA. Because our, one of our drummers from a while ago uh, was booted out of an airport for trying to fly with these to a gig. Uh, she had to FedEx them to the gig so that we could perform. Because uh, they were having none of this just loose in a, in a transport. As I'm sure you can understand why. There's PVC pipe with wires and electrical tape to strap down it. Um, totally justified security call on that one. Um, but this thing worked, right? It connected with media, regular standard MIDI adapters, plugged it into the computer. I could wave my hands. Um, I could press buttons. I could move faders effectively. Uh, and it just kind of felt right. And it made me feel like a, a musician again, rather than a technician playing with a computer. Um, it felt so musical to me that I thought, you know what, I'm going to make some more of these and uh, get some other people involved. So I went into like mad production. I started like hand wiring circuits, um, just making tons and tons and tons of them. Uh, this is like the hard way to do things, if you're ever wondering. <laughs> there are cats who do this like on a computer and it just prints out, you know, you can pick it up at the tax center. Um, I started playing with chemicals. Uh, I don't recommend it. <laughs> These things, you gotta use some ventilation. I missed that detail the first time I opened this up. I thought they meant like with a fan on. No, they mean like outdoors. Like this stuff's, will make you dizzy after about 20 minutes. Um, but it made really nice sculptures. I made things that could fit to our hands, that could be kind of ergonomic in the design. So rather than having like a square remote control that I had to kind of figure out how to hold on to it, I just kept on carving things like foam and whatever I could get my hands on until it felt right in my hands, right? And then I knew I, I had something I could work with. So I ended up, um, I was playing with fiberglass too. Another thing I don't recommend, fiberglass is itchy. You know, like if you've ever gone up to an attic, touch that pink stuff up in there. I had that stuff everywhere, and when you mix it with the epoxy, it becomes really rigid, so it can stick you. And all sorts of lessons, hard lessons I learned from this game. But uh, in the end, I was happy because I had these devices that ergonomically fit. They're a little different than the first air guitar version. I have four buttons uh, for my thumbs and four buttons for my fingers, so I can. I have a lot of things to press, and these buttons aren't just on off, they're like, I can push them gently or really firmly. Um, so uh, we started playing around this time uh, a bit more, and um, someone got it in their head that they, they needed one of these at Juilliard, so, uh, so I made one for them. They, uh, here's the guts of it. Um, there's a sense, that green little chip in there, that's the same kind of thing that's inside of a Wii remote that detects motion, you know, acceleration, left, right, up, down. Um, I actually used XLR connections on the output, which is not a standard thing for MIDI, but MIDI only uses three of the little pins inside the cable, so XLRs are nice, they, uh, they don't come out. They have a little locking clip, so that makes uh, makes these things stable. Because when we first performed, we'd like be doing a, a solo, we'd like, ah, and then the cable would fall out, and this note would just stay there until we plugged the cable back in. Like, that, that was cool twice, and then it was not as much fun. So here's the finished Juilliard model, um, nice and shiny. Uh, what else? 
so I have to show you. Oh, I'm working on some new models. I've, this, is, this is kind of version four, like kind of a Frankenstein uh, thing. I, I figured out ways to work with the, the fiberglass and the epoxy that uh, doesn't get the stuff all over my hands. And one I, I picked up from these, these folks that showed me about fabric. Like the, this glass, fiberglass is, is woven like fabric. So I had to actually put the thing together and treat the glass as fabric. So I had to hold it down with pins and stuff until I could use the epoxy to stabilize it. Um, and in the next version, I really hope to uh, get wireless using these things called XBs um, and the, the Arduino uh, microcontroller. So the, the hardware inside of these things won't need uh, these tethers anymore. So I'll be able to like, run around and say hi to the audience or whatever it is I need to do, you know? Um, yeah. All right, so that's, that's the kind of short story on how this hardware came to be. But now we, we got to say, all right, I've got a MIDI device that sends a bunch of basically fader data into the thing. So it would be like I was moving a de uh, one of those like automated Pro Tools control surfaces or something. Um, but I've got to come up with ways of controlling the things I want to control. So I need to take these two devices, put them into the computer, and translate the button presses and tilts and things like that into messages that make sense to whatever it is I want to control. Uh, for today's performance, we were controlling main stage, uh, Ableton Live. Um, I thought about using MSP, but I ended up going back to main stage because it just made me happy. Um, we have controlled um, other things. Uh, for example, you could control an external synthesizer. It doesn't have to be in the computer because we're using MIDI. So anything that's controllable by MIDI, we could control with these things. Uh, we've controlled video and graphics in, in different performances. And we did a show at uh, Juilliard where, or the air guitar at least, was used in a show at Juilliard where the like, tilting was controlling lights. Because they, they have a lot of lighting boards that are MIDI controllable, so you can lock it in with the music if you need to. Oh, and you probably figured out, I'm controlling this slideshow with the air guitar. Uh, so, long story short on mapping, there's really two things you can do. You can press a button, or you can slide a slider. Right? That's pretty much it. You can combine these things in all sorts of beautiful ways, but these are the two things we have to work with. So, one of the things I need to do is I need to find a way to make tilting act like a slider in a predictable way. So I, I tilt it this way, I get less. I tilt it this way, I get more, vice versa. And same with the front and back. Um, but the other thing that, that for me was the kind of the, the starting point of the air guitar gesture was doing um, something called, I would call continuous to discrete. And that is the computer looks for that spot at the top of a, if I move the fader really fast to the maximum amount and then pull it back really fast, the computer would know that I was trying to do something. It would be, it might sound like. So if I just press this, not a whole lot. But this allowed me to strum like I was playing guitar, you know? So this, this was kind of, when I got that to work, that's where the air guitar gesture and name really started to stick. Um, Uh, other things that we use are, even though these things are continuous, they just, just work just like a slider, we would have events happen when I reach the top of the slider, make something happen, and then when I reach the bottom of the slider, just at that moment, not like keep going, keep doing the thing over and over again when I'm at the top of the slider position, just when I go from low to high and high to low, edge transitions, they call it. Um, now you probably noticed that I'm controlling notes. And I'm going to ask Willie to uh, come out and talk a little bit about our tuning system. All right. So with the four buttons, you can make lots of different combinations. So on one hand, we can have up to 16 different combinations. Um,
So in that way, we can learn a new scale on the MIDI air guitar the same way you'd learn how to play a scale on a saxophone or a clarinet or a trumpet or a tuba, whatever. And so um, using these, um, these numbers, basically they're, they're working in a bit order format where each one is worth a certain number of, uh, of, of points. So uh, one, two, four, and eight numbers. And so then when you get combinations, you can make all the numbers, um, including whole steps and half steps of that scale that I just created. So the computer just needs the four numbers with those different values, and then the software um, at Langmo will interpret that as a musical scale. Um, he's actually changed his tuning system just a little bit to make it a little bit easier for him. Just adding some Instead of using true four bits, I took the most significant bit, the, the eighth place, and made it a seven, because seven half steps makes a musical interval that's actually more useful to me anyway. Does anyone know what that interval is? Would you know it if you heard it? That's a really common interval for you know like Western tonal music and popular music especially. Um, so I, I just found that was really nice to be able to get to that. And I can also get at it in two combinations. I can go, I can use the first three. So it's easy for me to play major scales that way, which are, again, common uh, musical construct. So following that same logic, yeah, you went over the octaves? Yeah. Yeah. Do you I go forward or back? Right. So following that same logic, with the four thumb buttons, we're able to access an offset of octaves, you know, like octave key on a saxophone or something like that. Well, now we have um, lots of octaves and a big number of combinations. so that we don't go deaf when I play those high notes, you know? So, I mean, that's... But sometimes I need to be loud, you know, you're like... It's trying to be rock and roll or something. Um, yeah, so that's the basics of the, the control system. Um, but then there's this whole, like, all right, we have this method, we've got these tunings, and we've got this tilting, right? But then there's this madness of the software we're using um, that we used to develop everything, and then we kind of came back from that madness and, and, and kind of developed a method again. Um, the patches use this program called MaxMSP, which is a graphic kind of programming language. You connect modules together, and every kind of combination of modules creates a new function. Uh, it creates a way to control something different, something musical, hopefully. Um, but I don't know if you're familiar with any of these kind of flowchart type programs. You start getting inside of them, and suddenly you're in this Pandora's box of like everything has to be described in terms of I connect this to that and this to that, and that ended up with like 50,000 objects and connections just to play like a couple of songs. Right? So, uh, and I ended up having to make hundreds of these specialized little programs that would be like, take this and play a note. Take this and transpose the note. Take this and echo the note. All of these kind of things just added up to like a lot of stuff. And if anything went wrong, I'd have to dig through 50,000 objects and connections and try to find the problem. And I was just, you know, I would like to do more musical things and not spend my whole time doing computer surgery. So uh, we started using more contemporary 
music production programs, right? Like main stage, you know, this is about as deep as it gets in main stage, right? I've got a general user interface, I've got some mixer kind of features, a synthesizer, and a bunch of stuff I can control, a bunch of parameters, knobs, and things I can turn. That meant I could make a simple patch that all it did was translate my gestures into MIDI messages, and then I didn't have to think any further than that. If you could play it on a keyboard and turn some knobs, we could play it with air guitars. So we all, I also tried to get cleaner at making connections, using color coding when necessary, and uh, keeping things organized. Much less obvious. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. Do you have questions? I've been like making noise and talking like this whole time. <laughs> cool, well thank you all for coming. And uh, if you have any other questions, uh, I've brought some flags here. I, I work at the music technology program at NYU. Um, your degree feeds directly into our undergraduate program. Uh, should you want to pursue that sort of thing, the associate's degree in music technology can, uh, through the CC TOPS uh, program, can connect with NYU to uh, continue on to a bachelor's degree if you're interested in that. I'm here for a second, so. Yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you.